to Katrina's Creations. Today is the Wednesday edition and it is going to be a tutorial for the crocheted basket weave stitch. So this is what it looks like. And I am using that stitch to make a pocket shawl. So this pocket I am, I'm actually controlling color, but this yarn is Lion Brand Mandala, and I have this set so that, here's the one pocket, see if I can hold this upright. This pocket will go right here and blend in with the colors. So the goal is to do the same on the other side. So the other side, I am ending with very much the same colors. Now I told you all on Saturday that I was going to possibly try a um, knitting technique with the crochet. I experimented with it, it got too challenging, but let me explain what I was going to do. Okay, if this is the end of my pocket shawl, in knitting, say this was knitted and I want to put my pocket right here, I would just pick up stitches along here and then begin knitting so the only thing I would actually have to sew or seam together would be the two sides. The bottom would be incorporated into it as I went. So I thought, well, I could do the same thing with the crochet, except I would be chain stitching and then building onto the chain stitch from there um, and following the pattern and it would be automatically attached. In theory, this does work to do that that way except that with the basket weave pattern, it's really a little bit more difficult to get a nice straight line. So um, I kept playing with it and experimenting and decided, no, let's, let's just go with a pocket and sew the whole thing on and play it safe. So yeah, no, no uh, unnecessary drama or excitement there. <laughs> Although next time if I do something different, I could try it that way, but not so much with the basket weave. So let's get started. I'm going to turn the camera around so you can look down at what I'm doing. Now this is worsted weight mandala yarn from Lion Brand and I am using, because I don't need this to be an overly, an overly tight uh, weave because it's just a shawl. So you can see it's, it's fairly loosely crocheted. I am actually using a K, which is a 10, 0.5 uh, it's also a 6.5 millimeter so whichever you use for that this is my clover imitation hooks um, I will put a link down below to these hooks these are not in line you can see here's the flat part it's slightly out and someone did tell me I should just twist them but I can't get them to move that way um, maybe I'm just not strong enough I'm not sure but anyway it doesn't bother me so we're going to get started with this. I'm going to be making a duplicate pocket, and this is the pocket for the one side. So I'm going to be making a duplicate of that, but not quite the same color, but very, very close. So the basket weave pattern is done in groups of four. So you'll see there's four double crochets here, and then here there's four double crochets. There's actually four double crochets here. You can see it too. So they're done in multiples of four, and then you add an additional one onto each end uh, for the like the carry up, which I'll explain in a minute. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to do, let me get my yarn here. You're going to just have a little slip knot with enough to weave in. And the pocket that I'm using, pocket size I'm using, as you can see, is one, two, three, four, five basket weaves across times four would be 20 stitches. So we're going to start with that. So we have one, two, four, five, six. I now have 20 chains and I'm going to add two more. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
too. This is for my foundation chain. Now, you're going to need to chain up. The first row all the way across is going to be double crochet. Now, I have the, a total of 22 chains. Now, I'm going to keep my finger right here so I don't lose my place. And remember I said there's a little chain up in between the rows. So this is where we're going to do this. We're going to do two chains because the stitches on the side are only two chains up, not three. So there's two, and then where I put my finger back here, this is where I'm going to actually go in and do my first double crochet. And I'm going to go into every stitch except the last one. I think this first row is always the hardest because there's not much to hold on to. So I'm going to continue double crocheting until I have a total of 20 double crochets. Now I'm coming up on my 20th stitch, so I'm just going to put that in here. Let me know in the comments, do you hold your crochet hook like this, like I do, like a pencil, or do you hold it like this, like you're holding a knife? When I was a kid and learning to crochet, um, in Girl Scouts actually, I was holding it like this. And of course they didn't have fancy crochet hooks then, they were just the metal or wood, um, or a lot of times just plastic. And I was doing it this way and I was told to hold it like this for better dexterity. I don't know if that's true or not, but I've gotten so used to holding it this way, this is the only way I can do it. I've tried holding it like this and it's, it's not good. <laughs> so the last stitch right here is going to be a half double crochet. Now you're going to chain two, turn your work, and here's where you actually will begin the basket weave stitch. Now remember this is your chain up, so this does not count as your double crochet. So this first group of four, you are going to crochet through the front loop and you're going to do a double crochet. So there I have my four through the front post. The next group of four, right here, I'm going to crochet double crochets through the back post. So I'm going to come, so I'm going to come around from the back and crochet a double crochet. So there I have, here's the four front, here's the four back. And this little ridge here helps me keep track of what row I'm on because the ones that go through the back form this little ridge. And if you look at this pattern here for this pocket, you're going to see two ridges. And then on the third one, you're going to switch whether you're going in the front or the back. So we'll go on and I'll show you the rest of that. The next four, of course, are going to be going through the front post. 
So here we have that with the front, back, front, and then the last eight stitches are going to be, again, these four are going to be through the back, and the last four are going to be through the front, and then you will have a little edge left over here, which is your chain up. So I will go to the end of the row and show you what to do next. So I'm going to do a half double crochet. So it's easy to remember, you chain up at the beginning of a row, two chains, and then at the end of the row, it is a half double crochet. Okay, so I'm going to chain two, turn my work, and you can see that what was, what was a front post on this side, when you turn it around, it is through the back post. So you're going to put like with like. So this is going to be four double crochets through the back post. So here are my four double crochets through the back post and you can see those two ridges that I was talking about on this pattern. Here's those two ridges. So this is what helps keep tra help me it helps to me to keep track where I'm at. So then we are going to be alternating front and back post all the way across. So your next four will be four double crochets in the front post, then four through the back post four through the front, four through the back, and you will have that little chain up at the end. I've now gone all the way across, and you can really see these two ridges now. It stands out. So we have this little chain up, and again, it's the end of the row, so we're going to do a half double crochet. And then we're going to chain two, turn our work, and we are now going to reverse the basket weave. So, and you can tell that because you have two ridges. So this one is now, you can see it is a front post crochet. We're now going to do a back post, four back post crochets, uh, double crochets through here. And now you can see the very first ridge of the back post crochet. So here we come to the ones that were done in the back post. So now we are going to do those four through the front post. So you go two rows in one direction and then you go two rows in the opposite. And that's what creates your basket weave pattern. And you can see it here. There you can see the, the beginnings of these ridges and here you can see those ridges and what it will eventually look like. And you just keep repeating every two rows you're going to alternate so you're going to do two rows of front post, and then the next time when you come back to that same section after two rows, it's going to be two rows through the back uh, post. So I hope this tutorial has been helpful to you, and uh, make sure you tune in on Saturday because I will have the finished pocket shawl at that point.
point and you can see how well the colors matched up. We'll, we'll see how well that works out. But uh, thanks again for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and I will see you again on Saturday. Bye everybody.